good morning guys and welcome back to my channel so today I have another perfume video for you which I'm really happy to say and I have to say that it definitely feels like fall now it's almost like somebody flipped a switch and overnight it suddenly started feeling like fall so I'm feeling very cozy today I'm gonna to be making coffee in one of my favorite mugs and we're just gonna sit down and chat about perfume so today I'm gonna to be sharing with you the perfumes that are at the bottom of my list so to speak my least favorite perfumes currently in my entire class Collection. why are they my quote-unquote least favorite will I be decluttering any of them if you are new to my channel thank you so much for stopping by my name is Alithia and on this channel we do talk a lot about perfume if that's something you'd like I would love if you would subscribe we also do some other home decor minimalism organization decluttering lots of little things around the house things like that so if you like that kind of thing I would love if you would subscribe and with that out of the way let's get started in today's perfume video all right guys so good afternoon so today i am going to be sharing with you my five least favorite perfumes currently in my entire collection and like i said in the intro that doesn't mean that i don't like them or that i'm planning to declutter them i will let you know my thoughts on all of them there's definitely a couple that are what i would consider to be more at the bottom of my list so to speak and there's a couple that i am considering or have considered possibly moving on and so that could be coming in the future, but I'm just going to be sharing with you my thoughts on them basically and why they are at the bottom of my list. So if you guys are new to my channel, I did used to have quite a few perfumes at the most. I had about 150. I did eventually get it down to about 70 perfumes. And then a few months ago or a couple months ago, I finally decluttered it down to 19. And I honestly feel so much better since doing that, but I do have five or so perfumes that are sort of my least worn or at the bottom of my list for some reason so you guys currently i am drinking coffee in my pumpkin mug and there isn't much left because i have been drinking this coffee and just doing some things around the house and filming all day so i've been working on this cup for a few hours and i absolutely love this pumpkin mug in my last video i got so many comments about this mug people said it was so cute and i found it at home sense and i just absolutely love the colors it's so perfect for fall i love the shape i love that it's got like scalloped edges i am also currently burning my golden nutmeg candle from sand and paws so in my last video i had told you guys that i was not ready to accept the fact that summer was ending and up until literally today you guys it did not feel like fall like today it was almost like somebody flipped a switch and all of a sudden i feel like it is fall and the leaves all of a sudden are like falling off the trees it was just like it happened overnight and i looked at our weather forecast we don't actually have any more hot days coming so pretty much all september was still really really warm like every single day we had really nice warm days and now looking ahead it's looking pretty chilly so and i actually had to turn the heat on today so i am definitely now finally feeling in the fall spirit which i'm really happy about because i love everything fall i love pumpkins I love fall scents. I love the coziness. I love how beautiful it is outside. I love changing of the leaves on the trees and it just feels really, really nice. So something else I do wanna do is switch up my nails. I do feel like I need to find some fall colors or something. I actually did these myself and these are my own nails, you guys. My nails have grown so long and they are so strong. It is ridiculous how strong my nails are because I've kept them protected with gel polish and i think because i've constantly had like gel on them i know that i think it's probably good for you to take a break every now and again but like honestly my nails grow so fast and they are so strong and anyway i did this myself this color the little like french tips with the light gray i think it's beautiful but i do want to switch it up i kind of want to do something either like brown or burgundy or gold or i'm just totally feeling all the fall vibes at the moment so comment down below and tell me how you do your nails and what color you currently have on your nails and also let me know if you have any suggestions or ideas what you think i should do to mine i may get them done at a salon just because i like the the whole feeling of going to a salon like for me when i go to a salon it's not just about getting the nails to look pretty in fact if it was just that i would do it myself because nine times out of ten i do a better job than my local salon does but it's all about 
the whole sensation. Like for me, going to the salon is just like super relaxing. I love the smell of the salon. I love obviously having somebody work on my hands. I love the whole spa experience of it. I love a hand massage and I love when people like work on my cuticles with the little nippers. I don't know what it is, but it is the most relaxing thing <laughs> in the world. Comment down below if you can relate. So anyway, you guys, let's get into these perfumes so that this video is not a mile long. I hope everybody's doing really well. And yeah, let's get started. Okay guys, so my first least worn perfume is Black Opium's Illicit Green. So you guys know that I love the Black Opium perfumes. At this point, I think I've owned every single Black Opium except for Floral Shock. Other than that, I think I've owned every single Black Opium. And I really like all of them. I just love the coffee jasmine pear vanilla that whole combination to me is just delicious and seductive and i just really like it i love the smell of like the sweet coffee um so this is currently the only black opium that i have and this one this one is a little bit different to the other ones because this one has the addition of green mandarin as well as fig. So this one is arguably the brightest, greenest, most summertime appropriate black opium out of all of the black opiums. And I think that's maybe why I don't wear this perfume or why it is on my bottom least worn. I think it's just because, which it shouldn't be because we just had summer, but I did not wear this all summer, you guys. And I think it's because for me, Black Opium always tends to be a cooler weather kind of perfume, even though this one is more of a summertime version of Black Opium, I still always feel like I reach for those warm, vanillic perfumes more in the winter time. So I think that as the weather gets a little bit cooler, I will definitely be reaching for this one more often. And I think also I'm a little bit like influenced because I know that my boyfriend doesn't love this perfume. It's not one of his favorites. He doesn't care for the black opium range. So I think that subconsciously makes me choose this perfume a little bit less because I do tend I do tend to gravitate toward perfumes that I know he really likes on me. I don't know why. I like smelling good for him. But um so anyway, this is one of my least worn. It doesn't mean I don't like it. I still absolutely love this perfume and I'm not in any way thinking of decluttering this one. But this one is definitely on my least worn. The next perfume that is on my least worn list is Victor and Rolf Flower Bomb. Now this perfume, you guys, I absolutely love. It is the longest running perfume in my entire collection. I have had this perfume longer than any other perfume, and I have worn this for longer, obviously, than any other perfume that's in my collection, and probably gone through the most of this perfume. So I love this perfume. This is a very sweet orchid tea fragrance. Um, it does have patchouli in it as well, and it's very, very sweet, and I think that's why I haven't been gravitating toward as much also because I have gotten so many new perfumes that are new to me over the last couple of years I've just been wearing other different perfumes this one was my signature scent about six seven years ago and I have a lot of really good memories associated with this perfume and if you guys watch my channel if you've watched for a while you know that this is the perfume I was also wearing when I met my partner so I've been wearing this perfume a long time and it has a lot of really good memories and I do really love it. Um, and I'm in no way thinking of decluttering this one at all. I can't imagine not having Victor and Rolf Flower Bomb. It's just, I think I've been wearing it less because again, I have so many other perfumes that are newer to me that are more exciting because they're more novel. And also, um, what do you call it? This one's also very, very sweet. And lately I've been really gravitating more toward those easy, soft, inoffensive, non-headache inducing, like shampooy fresh, sort of like Chanso Tendre, that kind of perfume. I haven't been wearing so much of these like spicier, deeper, sweeter perfumes. And Flower Bomb is quite bold. It's very strong. It's very, very sweet. And I think that sweetness has just been getting to me lately. Um, it's not as sweet as Ruby Orchid though, and it's not as sweet as Flower Bomb Nectar. But I still absolutely love this perfume, but it is on my bottom worn or my least worn perfumes out of my entire collection at the moment. My next least worn perfume is Jo Malone Peony and Blush Suede. Now again, you guys, I'm not thinking of decluttering this one. I actually the other day was tempted to declutter three perfumes from my collection. All three of them are in this video. So it's this one and the two coming up. I was actually tempted to declutter them because I thought, you know, I don't wear them or there's something about them or whatever. And I still kind of do want to declutter my perfumes even further from what they already are. So that could happen. That could happen. Um, but this 
this is just such a beautiful perfume but the reason i think that i haven't worn this one as much lately because to me this is very much a springtime perfume i don't know why it is so beautiful it is so beautiful it's like this beautiful peony floral with like this subtle soft feminine suede i always tell people it smells very bridal and to me this is not a hot summer day perfume it works in the hot summer day um but to me this is very much a spring perfume i don't know it's just so incredibly floral and this was so perfect back in like april may june i loved it but come july august i did not reach for this very much at all i think i wore it like once um and you can see i have put a pretty good dent actually like i've been using this it's missing it's missing some from the bottle so it's not like it hasn't been getting worn i do love this perfume it's just like currently it's in my bottom but i don't think i could bring myself to declutter this one because it is just it's so stunning and so elegant and so simple and easy and those are the kind of perfumes i've been going for lately are those easy everyday grab and go don't have to think too hard about them but i really don't think i'm going to wear this one much throughout the winter the next perfume that is on my least worn list and this one i have been tempted to declutter numerous times you guys like almost every single day when i look at my perfumes i am tempted to take this out and declutter it and i keep telling myself not to and i hold myself back because this is such a beautiful sophisticated perfume and this is one of my favorite chanel perfumes of all time so this is chanel chance eau de toilette um, if you ever see people talking about the chanel chance perfumes always remember the way that you can differentiate is that the eau de toilette have the clear plastic cap and the eau de parfum have the metallic cap so sometimes people will say chance tendre or they won't even say tendre they'll just say chance and they're holding up some random chanel bottle and you have no idea what one it is it's not very helpful um but this is the chance eau de toilette so this is the original chance eau de toilette version and this is a pink pepper patchouli balm and it also has hyacinth i believe and i think iris and maybe musk and i think there's also pineapple so this is like a fruity peppery patchouli balm it's very very pretty very feminine very sophisticated a little bit i don't want to say dated but it doesn't smell as modern as something like chanso tendre or as modern as something like gabrielle essence it does have a bit of that like you know slightly dated smell to it not that it smells as dated as something like chanel number no. five which by the way i love chanel number no. five i think it's beautiful and there's nothing wrong with it um but yeah so the reason that this perfume has fallen to my least worn is because gabrielle essence has kicked this perfume's butt in terms of my favorite perfume like my favorite chanel perfume of the moment is definitely gabrielle essence followed by chanso tendre which is really weird for me because i used to not like chanso tendre um and i used to love coco mademoiselle and coco noir and this one i've had a few chanel perfumes i've had a lot of chanel perfumes actually now that i think about it but this one just for some reason lately has been giving me a bit of a headache i've been finding it very sharp and very strong and i've been moving further away from the patchouli bomb perfumes and more toward the subtle florals and shampooy fragrances and the vanilla and less toward the strong mature patchouli fragrances so this one the reason i haven't been able to talk myself into getting rid of it is because it's classy it's beautiful um it always reminds me of blue de chanel for men i love blue de chanel i feel like this and blue de chanel are brother and sister like they have the same vibe they're both super super classy super elegant very rich smelling office appropriate everyday appropriate but have a sexiness to them that's what this is and i just think I don't know if I can get rid of it. And I also know that my boyfriend loves it. It has great performance. I do love the way it smells. I've just had it for so long and it's been just bothering my nose a little bit lately. So this one truly, it's not that I just haven't reached for it or like the season isn't right. This one actually bothers me sometimes now where it never used to bother me. So 
I don't know if I need to revisit the EDP because the EDP is a little more powdery and has a vanilla undertone. It's not as like fresh and sharp. This one's a bit more citrusy, fresh, sharp compared to the Eau de Parfum. So I really don't know. I might just have to go back and visit the EDP. And finally, the last perfume that is at the bottom of my wear list. I hope you guys don't mind. I put the camera down because I'm literally getting a pressure ulcer on my hand from holding the camera. The last perfume that is on the bottom of my wear list is Miss Dior Eau de Parfum. Them. Now this one you guys I have legit been contemplating decluttering which is crazy for me to say because I have always said that this is my favorite daytime perfume for women ever 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 and I still stand by that. This is still one of the most beautiful perfumes and has been a favorite of mine for so long. This is the second longest perfume that I've had in, or the perfume I've had in my collection the second longest. This is the original bottle. I have never had to repurchase it because I've never run out. You know, I don't think I can bring myself to let it go. I have been thinking about letting it go and the reason I haven't been wearing it as much, you guys, is not because I don't love it. I still love this just as much today as I did, I think it was like three years ago when I first started wearing this. The reason I don't wear it as much is because, again, it is very, very strong. It is a... Um, patchouli heavy rose orange fragrance it's very sweet very potent a little goes a long way you really do not need very much of this perfume at all and I have been noticing that I've become very sensitive to strong smells I've been I've become very headache prone lately I don't know if it's because of working night shifts or what the thing I don't know if it's my age like I don't know what's going on but for some reason I am very very prone to headaches from strong perfumes and this is a monster when it comes to like projection, longevity, sillage, everything. It's a very strong perfume. Now this one has been reformulated and many of you will probably know that if you were perfume people. And it's a real shame because this one has such good performance and it is truly so classy and so elegant and so timeless. And the new Miss Dior, although it's pretty, is a shadow of this one. It is just a very faint like whisper of this one. So I feel like they really have gotten rid of a very special perfume by reformulating it, which is too bad. So I haven't been wearing this one. I have lots of backups of it. I'm well aware that because this is discontinued, it's almost kind of like a vintage piece, almost, not really, but I could sell this and make good money in a few years if I wanted to, like not this one, but my other bottles. Um, you know, and the other thing, the other thing that stops me from wearing it is I, I think to myself, I have this complex in my head sort of where I tell myself, when you run out, what if you can't find it again, which I won't be able to, and you miss it and you want it. So part of me wants to cut my ties with it and move on so that I don't have to break my heart later. Do you know what I mean? Even though I do have like three or four backup bottles and I think it'll take me a lifetime to go through them, I still, part of me, Part of me still just wants to like make my peace with the fact that it's discontinued. So it's a little bit psychological. It's a little bit because I get headaches. Um, it's very multifaceted. I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure how I feel about my little Miss Dior, you know? I'm so sad that she's been discontinued. Even the Eau de Toilette version of this, you guys, was amazing, like so good. And now they're both gone and yeah. This is just a beautiful, sweet perfume, but even as we sit here now, every time I smell it, my head starts to pound. So it's not the perfume's fault, it's totally me, but that's why I have been tempted to declutter this perfume. But even if I was to decide to get rid of Miss Dior, like this bottle, I'm not going to actually get rid of it. I would probably keep it in a keepsake box because this would be a really beautiful, I don't know how to describe it, kind of an heirloom almost, something I would want to give to my daughter when she's an adult and she could give to her granddaughter because I think it would be so special, like personally myself as a grown woman, I think it would be so special if I had a perfume of my grandmother's. Like I have a perfume from my mom, the perfume my mom actually wore years ago, the physical bottle that only has 10 mils left and that is so special to me because it's not just the perfume. It's also the history. You know, I picture her spraying it on as she gets ready in the morning and she's many years younger and she's in a different time in life and she's got a whole different mentality. And 
that is special like that has energy with it and so this perfume also has energy like I look at this bottle and I think that's partly why I can't part ways with it I look at this bottle and I remember seeing it sitting on my dresser you know three or four years ago I remember getting ready for dates I remember before the pandemic hit like a whole different time you know and the feeling that I had and I remember the dress I wore when I first wore this and you know so it's got this energy with it it's not just the scent anymore it's like a whole it's a whole time capsule now <laughs> and so I think that's why I can't get rid of it and it's just so iconic and beautiful and pretty and high quality like the the materials are high quality and um you just don't get that anymore everything today is being like fabricated and mass produced and made cheaper with less oil concentration and it's just different you know this is this this is the end of an era truly i think it's the end of a perfume era that's how i look at this one so yeah that is my miss dior that's my long-winded thoughts on this one it's still so beautiful you know and the dry down of this perfume once it dries down it's no longer sharp and it's just classy as all can be like and because it isn't purchasable anymore it's going to be unique so i'm going to be one of the only people wearing this perfume which is also kind of special so that's my little miss dior um you know i may just put this very bottle away because it's special and because it's kind of an kind of an heirloom or a keepsake at this point and open up a fresh new bottle so that i can enjoy the fresh new juice and just keep this one aside because it's kind of special and i think it's very cool when multiple years down the road you can look at a perfume and you can see that juice and it's just cool to think that it's been sitting there for so long and it's got so much history with it and so much energy with it and i just i really like things like that so that is the last perfume that is on the bottom of my wear list at the moment so you guys that is it those are the five perfumes that are currently sort of my quote unquote least favorite or at the bottom of my list at the moment again doesn't mean i'm going to be decluttering them um not by a long shot like i explained to you but the one that i'm like the closest to decluttering is honestly the chance out of toilette just because even though I still love it and I think it's so pretty and it's so timeless it does bother me a little bit and I don't love it nearly as much today as I used to and maybe it's a sign that I need to visit different perfumes or maybe I need to go back to Chanel and just check out Chance Au Vive or maybe I need to pick something from Les Exclusifs you know like beige Chanel beige would be a beautiful one um yeah so I'm really not sure but I just that one's really sitting on the fence he's like almost over the fence <laughs> So yeah, those are my bottom um, five perfumes of the moment. I hope that you guys enjoyed hearing my thoughts on these perfumes. And um, yeah, leave your thoughts down below. I look forward to talking to you guys. Also, please make me a recommendation of a new coffee. I am still working on the Kirkland coffee. I don't know what it's called, blonde roast or something. And I have been really enjoying the Kirkland coffee from Costco. It's very good, but this particular um, type is a very high in caffeine. It literally like gives me the jitters and I kind of want to try something different. It doesn't have to be Kirkland, but just like, do you have a recommendation of your favorite Keurig or your favorite coffee in general? What do I need to try? Let me know down below. I'm on the hunt for a new coffee. I'm almost out. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful beginning of October. Bye.